Hey, Belly Up listeners, it's me, Charlie, letting you know that my first stand-up special, Midwest Goodbye, is alive on YouTube on 222 at 7 p.m. Central Time, okay? So that's Wednesday night, 7 p.m. You can start watching it. I'll be chit-chatting in the live stream uh, with you over on YouTube, or you can just watch it anytime after that. So, again, my first stand-up special, Midwest Goodbye, on YouTube. Uh, watch it. Let me know what you think. Okay. And Hey, watch out for deer. Bye-bye. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the bellied up podcast presented by who Charlie fleet farm. We love it. Miles. I got something I got to get off my chest already. Already. I'm just coming in hot with it. I I've been thinking about this, uh, for a while. I had a, I had a Midwest nice, I'm a Midwest not so nice moment. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. You know, lay, I, lay it out for me. What happened? Well, first, I just want to say I pride myself on, you know, trying to be a nice fella, you know, but I think everyone's got their limits and I yeah. think I found mine and I wasn't proud about how I, how I respond to the situation. I'll, I'll, I'll lay out the story. So I'm on hold. Okay. I'm on hold with a, um, a car service okay a rental car service of which i will not name i will not name them and um you know how that's because they can if yeah go ahead what no keep going yeah okay yeah (laughs) yeah i don't want them to go find this call and publicize it so you know how they put you on hold yes okay well they first of all they overcharged me a significant amount for something and i was disputing this and the the gentleman who is helping me was not um really uh, helping me, we'll say. Okay? okay. In fact, he was doing the exact opposite of helping me. He was being a little, I felt like a little snarky with me, but uh, you know, I felt I had been wronged. So I was upset about this. I'm sitting there with my buddy, you know, I'm on hold and I'm sitting there, my buddy's there, and I start, I gotta be honest with you, I start talking smack about this guy. <laughs> uh, I, I was. I was I was saying some some insults, you know, I was comparing to him some to some not great birds. Okay, and yeah, and uh, I said why he was wrong. And I figured he wasn't listening because the whole music was on. Yeah, they're doing something else. The music is on. I thought we were both listening to the same music, you know. But no. Why are you saying it like that? Because it's music is like music, right? But then music is like kind of like hold music. He, Isn't that the name for hold music? He, you notice how he said it twice to make sure that like I want he wanted me to ask about why he's saying music. I think that's the definition of music. I'm actually not sure, though. Weird Al put it in a song a while ago. And I've that ever since then, I've said it. Music. M-U-Z-A-K. Is that right? Or did I did Weird Al just invent that? Elevator music. music. So we're sitting there listening. I got got. You got me there. But we weren't in an elevator. So that wouldn't. But you get what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Anyway, and then he pops in in the middle of me talking smack about him. And he goes, sir, that's absolutely not what happened. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, uh, you were listening, you know? What are you saying? Well, he just popped in, they popped back out, and he put the freaking music back on. <laughs> it, it was he awful. He wields so much power because he can only talk when he wants to, and you you have to just sit there and take it. Yeah, but, it, I mean, first of all, I didn't, I wasn't saying, I was expecting. I would have never actually thought that they are listening to what you're saying. They are listening. Or that they could. Yeah, so I felt so guilty about that. I was like, oh, man, I should have said this about this guy, you know, because he was pissing me off, I'll be honest. But that doesn't mean he needed to be told to his face, yeah. just behind his back, you know? Yeah, so exactly. Anyway, so I figured that I'm changing my ways, Miles. I'm changing my ways. The next time I am on hold, instead of talking smack about the person that I that has put me on hold, I am just going to play, since I know they're listening, I'm going to play my own music. And oh, I'm just going to play them. really bad songs yeah. on the guitar. You could put on the, uh, no, I won't say that. Oh, so he was going to say you could put on uh, my album. Is yeah. that what you're going to say? What's it called again? It's called Unthawed, Barons and Gruel. It's actually a great album. Top the it's bluegrass great, it's uh, great, charts. It's great music. Oh, you know what, Miles? Okay. I was going to ask, Miles, what's your, what's a moment you're not so proud of not be, being not Midwest nice? And I think we just found it right there. That's I think we did. That's true. I think you're more Midwest nice than I am. Well, you're yeah, I suppose you're you're you kind of pride yourself on being a a snarky fella. Yeah, I'm a little sarcastic at times and it gets 
it gets away from me at times as well. Yeah. Especially when I'm intoxicated. But I've found it real risque with the sarcasm. That's true. That is true. Miles, though, I've found that since doing that, I've done I've done two calls since then where I've played my music while on hold. And I have found that I've been on hold a lot less time. Than- oh, wait, so you actually did this? Yeah. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. You did not actually play music on the other end and it worked. 100% I did. And I <laughs> encourage everybody else to do the exact same. Now, the better you play, the longer you're going to wait. So don't play good. Luckily, I'm still not a great singer, so I just played normal and uh, it worked out just fine. Or just start singing. I'm going to I'm gonna do that. You can do that. <sighs> so anyway, you're welcome. I'm going to sing. I'm going to uh, sing. Ope Nope by Barons, Barons and Gruel. Ope Nope. Can you give us a little rendition? Let's build us fire. Yeah, let's hear it. No, I'm not going to do that. Dun, we're not on hold dun, right dun, now. We're dun, not on hold, one, Miles. Two, two. <gasps> No, Miles, we're not on hold. I'm not. I'm you not. Do this for a living. I'm not your. Uh, I'm not your little circus monkey. Yeah, circus <laughs> monkey here. Okay, leave me alone. Jeez, yeah, Louise. It's fine. All right. Well, but that actually is great advice, Charles. It's see, well, I didn't know if anyone else out there works at a call center. I'd encourage you to call in Did and they, confirm uh, this, because right now I only have this one fellow who was clearly listening while the music was going. I'm not sure if it was that just that one car company. But ever since then, these calls have gone a lot quicker because people are sick of listening to me play the music. That's my hypothesis. But call in and tell me if I'm hey, right or wrong. I know you're listening to me right now. Pick yeah. up the phone. Pick it up. Pick up the phone. You that that could be him. funny. Yeah. Yeah. You start yelling at him. Yeah. But then maybe they turn you down. The or it's way like, we- you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Ah! <laughs> Just do it for like <laughs> as long as you can. <laughs> <laughs> sir, sir, sorry, sorry, I'm back. <laughs> Stop it. Stop. Or they just hang up. You got to start all over again. Yeah, that, that can happen, too. Well, Go too I, far that down. That happened to me, actually. I was on the phone with a f- like a flight company. I don't know, Delta or some shit. And I was on there for 45 minutes. And right before I was about to get it accomplished, like I went through. We were driving and went through a dead spot. And the call dropped. And I was ready. I almost just jumped out of the car. <laughs> I almost became roadkill at that point. You know, that is the worst. because And you were doing it in the car to probably save time. Because you're like, well, yep. I'm not going to want to do this while I'm sitting at home. I could do anything. I'm going to do it while I'm driving. Got nothing better to do. Yep. And that backfired yeah so i'm sorry to hear that and it's i mean how in 2022 are we still the best option is for us to call in and listen to the muzak yeah that's our best we put a man on the moon in 1969 we're still using call centers we're still listening to muzak it's crazy Make the music better Give too. It's like top forty countdown, if anything. Yeah, make it make it entertaining. There, I, 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 I don't know. I don't understand that at all. Invest in your music if you're gonna make us listen to it. Okay, right. you know. Well, I'm glad you got that off your chest. Yeah. Hey. Oh, and really, the bottom line is, I feel bad for that fella because he was probably trying his, but he was probably having a bad day. You his, know. Yeah, his wife probably died. Yeah, you never know. You never know. Well, I I wasn't going to go that dark, but you never know. Could have been that. You know, he could have called his dad and his dad could have yelled at him for, you know, how his yard looked. Yeah. You know, we all know how that feels. Or maybe <laughs> maybe he like just sharted and he's like, got to get to the bathroom. Fresh but shart. He, but he's listening to you talk shit about him, even though he's like he gambled on a fart and lost. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden you're being a dick to him. Imagine how he felt. I know. I know. Real, I, I, empathy is, I think, the takeaway from this. Yeah, let's all be a little more empathetic. Yeah, and also play music during the music. Yeah, but yeah. also be a son of a bitch on the other line if you're being if you're being if you're on hold. <laughs> 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 all, all right. right. Well, so let's take some callers, Charlie. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. All right, here we go. Hey, Hello. welcome, w- welcome to the Bellied Up Podcast. Who are we talking to right now? Hey, this is Andrew from uh, Pennsylvania. Andrew from Pennsylvania. What's going on, Andrew? Belly on up to the bar with us. What's on your mind? Oh, I'd love to belly up to the bar with you. Nice. (laughs) 
Oh, so I don't know. I moved to a uh, new city and I'm trying to find my new career path, right? Okay. You're in Pennsylvania, you said? Yeah, in Pittsburgh, actually. Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah. Steel, yeah. maybe. Maybe steel. <laughs> really? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Football? Yeah, I mean, I you... looked at the I looked at the apprenticeship. Did you? <laughs> oh, I'll, hey. shut up. I'll shut up. Yeah, you shut up, Miles. Okay. It's a big industry over there. Jeez. Well, right now, I found a job at a uh, concrete manufacturing facility, but, you know, it doesn't really not that much fun doing that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to make plans in the concrete industry cuz you get you, you set it all up and you do it and then it's just set in stone basically. Just doesn't move from there. That it's is the industry. point of it. Yeah. Yeah, that is the point of it. <laughs> if it's moving, you got bigger issues on your hands. I don't think you'll be working there very long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so let me ask you a question. What made you want to move to Pittsburgh first first of all? Um, well, I have family in the area, and uh, I've left my tiny little town because there wasn't a lot of opportunity. Got it. What was your tiny little town? Uh, Bedford, Pennsylvania. Bedford, Pennsylvania. God, I was hoping you were going to say Scranton, PA. Miles is a huge Office fan. If you if you don't if you're new to the pod, um, okay, cool. So, and how old are you? Uh, 26. 26 years old, you, Miles. You sound like an ambitious fella. Moving to the big city of Pittsburgh to start a new life, new career. So, um, blank slate. What? What do you? What's the? I know you said you're just looking for for a gig, but what's like the? What do you? What do you want to do long term? Yeah. What gets you going? I, you seem like you got big dreams. What are? What are your big dreams? Um. I don't see. I don't know. I kind of like like the promotion industry, like like music stuff like that. I'm really big into comedy, but I'm not that funny. So, well, <laughs> the way you said that, <laughs> then laughed at your own joke, was uh, hilarious. Yeah, I don't know if comedy is uh, necessarily. <laughs> no, yeah. look, comedy could be your thing. You just maybe you're more of a writer, and you got to write it out a little bit first, and then give it a go. You know, <laughs> so, well, what, like, are you? First of all, <laughs> Miles is still laughing at his own joke. By the no, way, I'm so laughing at him. That was so that was good. Oh yeah. <laughs> It was pretty well placed. <laughs> Maybe comedy, you do have something going for you right now. Uh, now, did you go to uh, school? Where are we at uh, schooling wise? You do high school, you do college. What'd you do? Um, well, I did high school, was going to do trades, and then I ended up getting into like heavy equipment okay. operation and oh. did that for a long time. Okay. Are you forklift do certified? Yeah, do you have a. Yeah, I can drive forklift. Uh, no, 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 no. That's not what we ask. Are you forklift certified? Yes. Like, through the company. <laughs> through the- I don't have a license. Okay. Okay. All right. We're All just right. checking. We're suspect. just checking. All right. So so you're, you're a fellow who got out of high school. You got a CDL? No, I don't have a CDL. Okay. All, All right. right. All right, so you're a fellow who got out of high school, and you're like, yeah, college isn't really for me. You started working, and uh, then you're like, I got to get out of my hometown. And when did you move to Pittsburgh? I'm just trying to get your timeline, your story, your origin story set up here. Uh, about a month ago. A month ago. So fresh, fresh in Pittsburgh. Have you had any work there yet? Yeah, I started working at... Uh, the concrete manufacturer. Oh, yeah, place. of course. Way to listen, Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Jeez Louise. This podcast could be like 40 minutes shorter if Charlie would just listen the first time on some of this stuff. You know, I like to hear things twice, maybe three times before they really sink in. So it's- why don't you go ahead and just tell us your story again? That'd be great. Yeah. You know what, Miles? <laughs> Yeah, you know, see, the, this is the crap I take on this podcast. Do you want to uh, host a podcast? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm looking for another partner. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh. Well, why don't you, why don't you, we uh, asked him what his big dreams were. Yeah, I know. I, he hasn't said it yet. I okay. Know. What are, yeah, that's cause what, I'm talking. What All are right, your big up. dreams? That's a way deeper question. I thought we were going to get into it. Well, here. we're going for it. We're in the deep end here, fell. We're not mm. a swim. There's no getting out uh, the pool. We don't dip our big toe in to see how the water is. We just cannonball right in, buddy. 
Oh, I know. I used to listen to you guys when I was driving forklift at the sawmill <laughs> all the time. Notice how um, said I said used to. <laughs> <laughs> what episode well, was the breaking listen. point for yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't have a radio at my new job, so I can't God. do it now. I was just, I, I was just playing your other episode, how to deal with the wind before you answered. Oh wow, well that's really nice of you. Thanks for doing that. We appreciate you listening. <laughs> All right, big dreams. What are they? Uh, I don't even know. I wouldn't have gave up my whole life if I knew. I mean, I'm a good wood carver. I'll give you that. You're I, a good wood carver. Yeah, like I've made some tables and stuff like that, and I've carved like really intricate designs into them. Oh shit! Well, that's, that's actually pretty cool. That's an awesome skill that not a lot of people have. I bet you can make uh, a great living doing that. Potentially, see, what sucks is I just moved to Pittsburgh, and it's hard to get lumber here. And where I'm from, I can get it for free, and it's hard. Oh, well, what makes it so difficult? Just more expensive than free? Yeah, well, yeah, it's like you're paying probably 8 or $9 a board foot in Pittsburgh. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. I didn't know. Who are, we got to call up lumber liquidators, ask them what the hell's going on. Yeah, well, and, and look, that's that's not a huge problem. You just go back home, and then you transport the lumber back to... Uh, yeah, get a U-Haul. And then... You've got a reason to listen to more bellied up while you're in the car. How far of a drive is that? Well, it's about a two hour drive. So well, that's, what about an episode? <laughs> that's about that's about depends two episodes. Depends on if I let Charlie go or not. Yeah, it depends how many times I need you to repeat your story. So anyway, where are you from again? <laughs> <laughs> well, that- get a U-Haul, fill her up, get a storage unit, and then just keep it all in there, and you're good to go. We we solved that problem. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that? How's you got that a website feel? or something that we can uh, check out your work at? Uh, no, I just got into it like this past year, so I've only done like four or five projects. Okay, right. were they paying gigs? Uh, well, no. <laughs> I, well, I made them. I made the tables, and then I ended up selling them after I made them. Well, okay. that's a paying gig that, right yeah. there. That's cool. Well, and how did you feel doing it? Um, I like it. It just took me forever because I did it all. I didn't have any actual like power tools. So I did it all by hand, like with a chisel and a mallet. God, that's cool. That is like pretty sick. Actually. That's awesome, man. God, this is a great Charlie, origin story. If you want good comedy, go watch Charlie and I try and put uh, make a bar for this podcast. Yeah. And you're going to make us look like we are the amateur of all amateur hour. Yeah. I mean, it, and so it, like the carving, like what kind of carvings are we talking about? Um, so the last one I did, I did like an altar table for this girl that's like a witch. And so I did like a pentagram and a Celtic knot all the way around it. Oh, shit. You're going to have to back this up. Yeah. This story is going to need to be repeated. And it's not because yeah. I forgot it. We need clarification. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Like, let's not glaze <laughs> over she, the is, whole witch thing. Is, like. Is, we're talking broom and all, or what's going on? Yeah, no, no like like Wiccan, like practicing Wiccan. Practice. Oh, she's a practicing Wiccan. Okay, yeah. what is what is that? Inform me. Is this a Pennsylvania thing? Um, it could be. There's a lot of girls here that are like that. They're not like that in the Midwest. I've I haven't met any uh, witches yet. I'm looking up practicing Wiccan just so. Now, are we st- are we are we in an eggshell deal here? Are are the are the Wiccan folks going to be upset that we don't know about this or anything? Let us know now, okay? We're stepping on uh, practicing Wiccan. I couldn't even spell it. Jeez Louise. Okay. Um, oh no, Wicca. Is, oh, it's a modern day nature based pagan religion. Uh, she's a pagan. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, good for her. And you made her a. Uh, That's what they call themselves as witches. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Do you, what's like, uh, so what are they doing with the table after you give it to them? Yeah. Uh, you know, they like burn sage and do like spells and stuff like that. I'm, I'm not big into it. So you're not. I just carved the table. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That is what you carve it out of. Uh, that one was walnut. Walnut. Like black walnut. Did did she request the walnut? Well, yeah, she's she a didn't witch. request the type of wood, but she requests the design. The design. The, the, 
it ended up being walnut because that was just what I could get from uh, the local guy that I know. Oh my god, this is awesome! We gotta have him. We, we gotta be his first commissioned piece of art. I think that's exactly what's gonna happen right now. Uh, but first, let's just get look. If this is his first project, he he made the table for the which we gotta figure out what his other projects are. We gotta figure out what well, strong well, first, yeah, first of all, that we gotta uh, we gotta figure out, yeah, I mean, what's what, his lane? What, what, what are you, what's your he's on the phone? Yeah, <laughs> all right, give us one sec. We're gonna, yeah. we're gonna discuss a deal here, yeah, and then we'll come back to you. Yeah, now we don't want to lowball him, okay, yeah, because that wouldn't be cool. That would okay. be bad to lowball him on his first one, but also we don't know how good he is. We don't know how good so he is, so we could probably get a good bargain on it. Yeah. It'd be like buying with a coupon. Maybe he's got a coupon oh, code. Are you saying he kind of seems like a sucker? No, I don't think so. I but I think that. I know. I think he could do a two for maybe or a coupon. Yeah, well, let's, to, well, let's do a two for uh, let's let's offer a two for one. Okay. And and start there. Yeah. And just okay, okay. So, hey, you, you again? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we have an offer. Oh, jeez. Yeah, are you, you living been, under a railroad track <laughs> right now? You, you didn't hang, tell us that. Are we, you hanging uh, out at the tracks right now, throwing the, rocks at trains? Forget What's going the deal, on? dude. This guy's no. living in a train no, depot. Yeah. We got to hire him stat. No, I went, I went outside. I live in a super industrial neighborhood. Okay. Pittsburgh. <laughs> Oh man, I love this. This is great. <laughs> so loud. <laughs> um, so we have an offer for you. Um, we think we're gonna try and uh, you know we want to do a little bit of a trial run base here. We're gonna pay you. I mean, but we're gonna commission two know. pieces of art from you. One for Charlie, one for me. We both have different offices, and uh, we're looking to hang something on the wall. What do you think? Yeah, what do you want? I literally just got a pneumatic chisel, so I, my turnaround time would probably be a lot faster than the before. Sweet. I mean, those that is my favorite type of chisel. Yeah, I've been. I was looking at those pneumatic chisels. I was like, ah, maybe next Christmas. But yeah. I'm glad you got one. Uh, I have chisel envy right now. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah, it's that's. Yeah, I, I had to Black Friday sales and everything. Okay, I want to get a sense of the different things you've carved. So for for the witch, you did. Um, uh, and it, which is proper nomenclature for the gal? Yeah, I believe. Yeah, okay, a Wiccan. Oh, a Wiccan. So for the Wiccan, you did an I a Celtic knot, and what else? And like a pentagram, and then I backfilled it with like colored epoxy. Ooh. Oh, you, um, so you're an epoxy guy too. Jesus, what can't you do? Well, yeah. So I saw this guy on YouTube that was making epoxy tables, and then he didn't carve anything in them. Mm -hmm. and he was charging like nine thousand dollars and i was like well if i carve them even being new i could probably get a couple of grand so how, how much did oh, you oh <laughs> see setting the expectations he is. For how i much see he's him gonna charge uh, us. you're actually a great businessman uh we can already tell your negotiation he did tactics. the classic like well i could be charging this but i'm gonna give you guys a deal way down there <laughs> you see what he did yeah there? how much did you charge the uh wiccan for the the, the walnut table um, it was only a two by three table, so I only charged her three hundred bucks. Wow, you should have lied to us right there. Yeah, um, should have went way higher. Yeah, two by three. Okay, three hundred bucks. All right, what else have you carved? Um, I did a four foot by three foot coffee table for a friend of mine. Oh, with, what was on uh, that? Uh, that one had like this geometric pattern on the inside, and then like just like different designs and that was where I, the first place i tried like the celtic knots out and i did like a translucent pink epoxy pigment over them it came out really nice sweet sweet i like that he, he's so he's got a lot of experience with the celtic knots okay so that's two what are the other two projects uh the other one i did was just like a normal walnut piece with just like squares around it and the epoxy because i wasn't sure how it would set up mm -hmm. and then i made my ex-girlfriend uh in table that had <laughs> that had a cool little design in there that she had illustrated and then i carved it who broke up with who uh well you know that's it was it was her mostly so that's why i live in pittsburgh 
Oh, oh, wow. We came all the way back around. Now, okay. You're at a crossroads in life. Now, was that the last no, one? No, he's at a railroad crossing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rear, railroad crossing in life. And you enjoy this, wo- this Did woodworking? Did she give you the table back after you guys parted ways? <laughs> no, she still has it. I even hand carved the legs for it out of some branches and everything. Oh, my God. Wow. And you just pick this up and start carving stuff? Yeah, I saw I was whole, I had caught COVID and I was at home watching YouTube and I got my buddy to bring some lumber over and I just started doing it because I was like, I can do better than this guy. <laughs> Love that attitude. I like that attitude. Um, so what is what do you think she does? You know, you're you still got, on the girlfriend. Thing, I am huh? a little bit. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think when they're if she gets a new boyfriend and he comes over, is you think she's just gonna be like, oh yeah, my ex boyfriend made me that table and I just love it. It's still here. Isn't that kind of weird? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, we're still talking. Like we went to a concert yesterday and everything. But oh, so wow, wow. Was it awkward? You guys had going to that concert together? No, we were friends beforehand. It's just like one of those things that it's like mm, we're both tired of being in the relationship so it, it turned into a relationship is what it sounds like yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah well that's uh, and but you don't want to be in the relationship anymore not a, not announce that you wants to be in it no no i'm cool i'm trying to uh you know yeah but it's also one of those career. things he says that now but but are you guys okay with uh, the other one going and maybe hanging out with someone else? Oh, I mean, what she does is her business, you know. She can do whatever she wants oh. as long as she's happy. Uh oh, that was very high pitched response. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as she's happy, <laughs> I mean, she like, can do whatever she wants. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah, it's one of those things, you know. It, yeah. It's still a little fresh, but I I wish her the best. Oh, geez, okay. Miles, we're we're I feel like just salt broke in up a with fresh us. wound. I feel like you just broke up with us. I know. We're being mean right now. We're being mean. Let's get back to business. Well, it's dream. Okay, let's get back to your dream. Your dream is to do the wood carving. I love that dream. That would be, I think it's a good idea. Sick. That would be sick, you said? So he's yeah, feeling this. That would be awesome. Well, you you just you got two commission new pieces now. Miles, what do you want? Um, I want me, I want it to be me riding a noble steed. I'd love to have long oh, hair. <laughs> I'd love to be shirtless and chiseled. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Oh, and God. pneumatically um, chiseled. And then I would also <laughs> like to be, uh, chugging a bush light. And the background would be uh, probably some mountains of some sort, and then in the back and on the mountains, I'd love to have uh, people playing trumpets, and there'd be maybe doves flying overhead, and I'd like it to be a, probably a partly cloudy day. You know, um, if it's overcast, it's just going to be kind of weird and hard to chisel. So maybe I'm thinking some <laughs> Toy Story bubbly clouds in the background. What do you think of that? Um, it sounds like you want a painting and not a. No, I'd like it to be chiseled like that. Miles, that's going to be at least fifteen thousand dollars. I know, I know, but hey, you got to pay for good art. You know what if what if you get a nice? What if this is your wedding gift to Anne? What if you fu- think of a nice table that Anne would like for no, her I wedding? No, I just I just described what she would want. <laughs> This is for her. All right. You thought I was going to hang this in my own office? Yeah. This is going in exactly. Anne's office. So, so is this a table, Miles? Is this just like a, a, a piece of wood that would hang there that, that is chiseled? It could be. It could be a wall hanged piece of wood or it could be a table. Okay. I think you should pick because that's what you, you want him to pick. Yeah, I'll let him. Yeah, I'll, I'll give him the creative freedom to do what he needs to do. Okay. As long as, long as I can get the... Uh, Long hair and chiseled body, you know. Oh gosh, you know what? I'm sorry that one. I'm sorry you guys. Charlie's deal with that. gonna be a little easier. All mine is the gonna Green be Bay Packers logo. No, I I want. I was thinking about that. I was thinking about Packers one, but I would actually. Uh, are you? Do you fish at all? 
Yeah, I do. Uh, what's your favorite species of fish to catch? I mean, I don't fish a lot. I've went bass fishing before, and I've done like very a little bit of deep sea fishing. Okay, got it. I see. I see. I see. Okay, I'm hoping to get uh, a walleye carved into a uh, coffee table. That'd be actually pretty sick. Coffee table with a walleye on it, and then could I get like a little epoxy in there to make it look like the walleye's kind of underwater? You know. See, now that's a lot more reasonable. <laughs> See? I could totally do that. All oh. right. All right. That's my that's mine. And and what uh I don't want you to epoxy mine. I just want it raw carved so you can save some money there. Miles, that's <laughs> gonna take him forever, dude. What? I mean He's got I'm, the nomadic chiseler. What was it called? <laughs> it, uh, yeah, you got that you got it right. Is that what it was? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, charge he's... him, charge him up the <laughs> ass for this though, because this is this is uh, that's gonna be a pain to do. So charge him like ten thousand dollars. No, what you gotta do is you gotta look at this as uh, uh, as I'm pushing the boundaries on what you're able to do limit wise. Well, <laughs> he's that... also gonna push the boundaries of what your bank account's able to <laughs> that do. That is true. And I think yeah. that's a fair right. deal. Well, uh, we're gonna have. Uh, you, we're gonna have someone reach out, and and I, we want to see a couple photos of your uh, of your current chiseled uh, chiseled game, and uh, we can kind of go from there. How's that sound? All right, shoot me or shoot me a text. I was gonna post on your uh, Twitter page there. Yeah, yeah post, post them on Twitter. We'll we'll uh, we'll retweet it from uh, the Bellied Up Twitter handle. That's pretty cool. Maybe you'll get some more uh, bids from from that too, or whatever, or more commissions. But no, I'm serious. I don't even need to see anything. I just want to get that walleye table. What do you think you charge for that? Um, how big do you want it? What's four in by three is good. Four by three, or a yeah, four by three. That's a big old table. It is, but okay. And yeah. What do you want it? All what right. do you want it made out of? Uh, what are my options? What what wood you got? <laughs> Why don't we start yeah, there? Yeah, it sounds like what's, you don't have every wood of readily available. Yeah, what's what's a good wood? Well, what would look nice there for a walleye? For um, I mean personally, I do like I like to look at cedar on anything, but with the carving, it probably wouldn't hold well. Walnut's a really good one. Um, sycamore looks nice when it's carved, especially with epoxy because it's real light wood. Mm. If you go lighter, then we can stain it whatever color you want. If you go darker, then you're stuck with whatever color that wood is. Okay. Uh, well, let's uh, – you you like walnut, you said? Yeah, it comes out really nice. Let's and do, it holds the carving well. Hell, yeah. Let's do that. We'll do a walnut thing and then sort of some epoxy deal to make it look like it's underwater oh. would be slick. Okay, I will definitely do that. I'm going to reach out to you <laughs> with the design and everything. Perfect. Look at that. I believe you asked how much that would cost. Oh, yeah. How much is that? Uh, I mean, that'd probably be like, I don't know. I'm a fan of you guys. So like, Don't give them the fan the discount. Don't give them the fan <laughs> discount to give, charge them what it costs. That's my uh, agent. Bobby, we, could, we could probably do it for like six. Six hundred. Oh, it's like six thousand. Jeez. <laughs> All right, six hundred sounds no. good. We'll we'll start six hundred. If it's gonna be more, just let me know. But six hundred—that's a hold good on, baseline. Hold on. hold on one second. We're gonna discuss. What's that? I think you can get it for five. You think I can get it for five? It for five. Why do you think that? I don't know. It just seems like if we pressure him enough, he'll just fold. Okay. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Can we do it for five or no? Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, he's a tough cookie to crack, Miles. Yeah, you know tough what? Tough cookie to crumble. I got to get the analogy right. You know right. what? I think I'm going to start asking around about you then. I'm going to oh. call up the witch and see if your work is as good as you say it is. You know what? And to stop me from doing that, you could just maybe bring it down to 500. You know what? I mean, I'm uh, I'm confident in my work. All right. I like his confidence, honestly. I'm I'm sold on his confidence and I don't care that much. Let's go 600 for the walleye table. Miles, I fold. He did exactly what we were going to do. I know, but We've, he pressured you Were enough. you listening to us talk while we were not talking directly into the microphone? 
No, not at all. Okay, okay. see, he's no, an honest guy. That would have been guy. rude if you that did. That would have been rude, yeah. It was a yeah. private conversation yeah. between Charlie and I. Yeah, that's eavesdropping. All right, you got a buyer for the walleye table. And if if other folks out there listening kind of like it, where can they find we your stuff? We want you to live your dreams. I appreciate the support. Yeah, well, where can they find you? Um, oh, I don't have a social media for my... Oh, for God, for God's sakes, what's the name of it? What's the name of your wood carving? Do you have a name yet? No, not. I don't even have a name. Uh, I'll have to call back. When, once you get your table, I'll, I'll call back in. You guys can help me come up with a name. Okay. okay. Are you on social media at all? Yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. I do like photography in Pittsburgh and stuff. All right. Give us your Instagram handle if people want to get a, a table. Uh, thre- threadbare underscore hippie. Threadbare underscore hippie. Yeah. Sounds like a fellow who just made a table for, for a, a witch. witch. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. I'm excited, man. Thank you for calling in. That's going to be slicker, slicker than snot right there. I'm I'm excited. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, man. This is great. Hopefully, uh, you know, you can get some more uh, tables to carve. Yeah. Thanks for taking my call, guys. Hell yeah. Awesome. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. You too. But Charlie. Miles. He literally, we, we said we were going to pressure him to five. Yeah. And then he would fold. But instead, I, he I, pressured you and you folded. This cookie crumbles under pressure, Miles. I, I don't know what to that. tell you. Okay. Good. I don't like confrontation. I'm I, like Rex and Toy Story. I know. All right. And, and you know, five, six, I'm taking it out of the bellied up account anyway. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're like a married couple now. My money's your money. Yeah, exactly. Um. Yep. One other thing too. Yeah, I knew he was a hippie just by the way he laughed. You know? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but hippies all laugh the same way. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. But I was. How like, does a hippie laugh? I was like, this guy loves to smoke weed. How as did, soon as he laughed for the first time? How does a hippie laugh? I don't know. It's just like more of like a. What I, go back and listen to it. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> like but that. Like yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of a vocal fry. It's just like huh? it's like I don't uh, think he did that. I don't think he did that, he, did he? He definitely did. Oh that. yeah, the hippie laugh. I wasn't paying attention. I like hippies. I never said there was anything wrong with being a hippie. I just said I could tell he was a hippie by the way he laughed. Yeah. It's like they're laughing really loud and hard, but they're not showing they're not really doing they're not really doing that. They're just you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Dude, how about his first piece? That he brought up, he just casually said it was made, I'm made for a witch. Made for a witch. It's because he's a hippie. He's hanging out with witches all the time. I suppose. I didn't know that. Does that make him a warlock then? No. Now, now or you're a get, wizard. No. You're a wizard. I don't know, honestly. I don't know, but yeah. Interesting guy. Thanks interesting for fella. Out. We're gonna take another one here. All right. Who do we got on the line? It's Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. How are you? Where are you calling in from? Uh, Minnesota. Oh, Minnesota. Where, Where in Minnesota? <laughs> uh, Dakota, actually. Small town. Dakota, Minnesota. Is it? I like the rhyming Yeah, we there. just actually saw you. We just saw it's right by La Crosse, Wisconsin. Oh, sure. We saw you in October. Oh, thanks for coming out. Did you have What'd a good you time? What did you think of the show? What did you think of the show? <laughs> it was great. Very. It was fun. I wanna, uh, what was his worst joke that he had? Yeah, I'm curious about that too. I don't think there was one. Oh, See, Miles, come on! I keep trying to tell Miles <laughs> I'm a funny guy. He doesn't believe it, but you know, maybe one day. Think, Miles is funny too. Yeah, I don't know about that. Oh, shucks! Know. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> well, why don't you belly on up to the bar with us and, and tell us what's on your mind? Um. I just have a question. Yeah. <laughs> I My boyfriend is a very, very avid deer hunter. Okay. And um, in 2020, he got a pretty, pretty big buck. Good for him. He's still talking about it. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm sick of hearing about it. <laughs> 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 he 
He was on a couple podcasts. He was in the paper. He was in Northern White Tail Magazine. Oh, you're you're married to a, or yeah. you're dating a rock star yeah, right he didn't now? Tell us that. Yeah. Why didn't you didn't you didn't say <sighs> that we were uh, that we had Mick Jagger? Yours was your boyfriend. Oh, I'm just. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're exhausted. I, I, <laughs> I'm exhausted. I'm very happy for him. He d- he puts in all the hard work, but it it gets to his head. Okay, it gets to his head. Now, can I ask just before we go further? Why did he end up in all these things? How big of a buck did he shoot? Uh, I was a twenty five or twenty five pointer. <sighs> Holy smokes, Charlie! You realize this is exactly what you wanted to call in and not talk about. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. It was, sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was a. 215 and 5 non-typical score. Oh, jeez. Oh, Holy Louise. smokes. All now, right, well, where, now we're, where, we're not where gonna... do you shoot it at, though? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a secret. Oh. Here in Minnesota. Oh. A little deer honey hole. Okay. See, huh? Wow, we thought we could get that out of you, you know. <laughs> He's uh, trained you well. No. <laughs> yeah. Did he even uh, tell I've been you? I've him for a very long time. So you got you got it mounted in the house then, or what's the what's the whole thing with that? It's out in the man cave, out in the shed. Okay. okay. Did he do a shoulder mount? Did he do a full body? Might be a full body type of one. Yeah. He almost did, but he didn't. It was just about sh- half half mount. Yeah, the shoulder mount. Did he try to put it in the living room? No, nope, he's got all of his deer. He got actually three deers, his biggest deers this year. Two in November and one, the biggest one in December. Oh, my. Of 2020. Wow. Ah, Charlie. Uh, yeah, sorry. She didn't sorry. want to talk about yeah, this. Yeah, we're not talking about this. Okay, well, why'd you, why'd you call <laughs> in? Do you know what he shot it with, though? Sorry, before we move on. Yeah, bow the big, gun. The uh, muzzle loader. Mu- oh, he's a muzzle loader hunter. Okay. Wow. Good for him. He does it all. He he's does a, it all. He's a red coat. He's okay. a bow hunter, shotgun, yeah. I mean, I don't want to say this. It might make you uncomfortable, but I think I'm falling in love with him, too. Ah, uh, I get I get well, what, I get where you're at. That's what I've been dating him for 25 years. Holy smokes. And he's. Yeah, we've been dating since we were 14, 15 years old. Oh, my. We have three kids. Why did you guys never get married? Um, That is his. His thing. I want to get married. He doesn't. Okay. okay. Well, now it's hard because he's married to the game. You know, it's hard to be married to you and the why, game. That's why, yeah, that's why I need help. Oh. How in the hell do I get him interested in me? Oh. I mean, I'm well, thinking maybe I need to borrow your guys's hunt the, that buck costume you guys wear. <laughs> I need to prance on the house and that. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> we uh kind of a uh, little uh furry revealing action. slutty deer costume. Miles, watch. Well, no, that's that's what she not she's not. I'm saying the costume would be well to get him interested. Is what I'm saying. Are Sorry. You, are yeah, you? I'm just I it's it's 24/7. He talks about hunting. He watches the videos. He does all his trail yeah. cams. That's everything. Do you know what kind of trail cam I he would uses? I just like just a little uh no. Okay. Miles, back, maybe. You, oh, okay. I would love to know his regimen on him. scent killing if he's got a whole routine. Miles, actually. can you stay on I'm track? I'm sorry, this guy. This is a gal who's trying to get her fella to see her uh, uh, for more than than just you know the deer. I mean, okay? he sounds like he's the Michael Jordan of deer hunting. I, if you had Michael Jordan's one of his wives on the podcast right now you'd ask her some questions about him okay i get it what, but- uh, not wife girlfriend sorry yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sensitive subject sorry. miles yeah hopefully someday hopefully someday okay well what what is he what does he say like when you say i think we should get married does he shut down right away or does he have a reason for not wanting to get married he kind of shuts down. Okay, well. He says he doesn't want to rush into things. Doesn't want to <laughs> rush into things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, he, Lord. He doesn't have an 18-year-old son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's smart to get him out of the house before you get married. That's a good move, actually. It's something yeah, with taxes or something. 18-year-old son, and then we have 10-year-old twin daughters. Okay. 
A little surprise. We thought you were getting one, got two. Um, two for listen, one, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, here's my question. What is your approach when you bring it up? Is it passive aggressive? Is it It should be straight passive Adam? aggressive after what is 25 it? years. She's probably tried I, everything. I've tried everything and I just, yeah, I have I don't even bring it up anymore. So you said earlier. Everybody that we are around brings it up and he just, he gets, he shuts down. Well, okay. This is a, this is a, I think a deeper. Well, I, uh, I, I can also, I think I can empathize a little bit with him because Everyone was always on me about popping the question. And every time someone asked me when I was going to do it, I would move it back further so that. So I think you guys just need to stop asking him about it and then he'll do it. Sounds like that kind of situation to me. Yeah, it might. I don't even bring it up anymore. Why do you why do you think he doesn't want to do it? If you had to take a guess. What's the line about the getting I the milk for free? The what? What's the line about that? You know what it is, Jared? Nah, I don't know. Keep you going. don't. You I'll don't know. Do you have any? Uh, you, you you just got no idea there. No. Because he just kind of shuts down. Oh my gosh. Well. Um, yeah. Yeah. W- well, <laughs> have you? Uh, have you ever tried? Yeah. Have- why buy the cow when the milk is free? That's the line. You know, it's there probably his approach. Yeah. Ah, oh, geez. You know, Miles. Well, I, look, I think I think that you kind of uh, have you guys ever gone to a, uh, you know, may, here's what you do. Are there any. Um, here, OK, OK. You tell them that you've got a, a buck seminar that oh, yeah. a couple's buck seminar uh, and you did all your research there and and you get this person, the person who's coaching the buck seminar. He's talking about bucks. But what he's really talking about is marriage. And that's the way to seep in. You know, the thing is, this guy loves deer and deer are, you know, I mean, they are not uh, they are a polygamous species. And I think he's been spending too much time. Well, now, I'm not saying he's stepping out by any regard, but that, you know, <laughs> if he were a goose hunter now, goose, uh, they, they mate for life, you know, so Geese. maybe you can get him into yep. goose hunting. Mm, probably not. OK, um, Charlie, nice. He try. likes his deer. Yeah, he, he likes his deer. Yeah. Nice okay. try. Uh, I got another yeah. thing. It seems like he's turning into a little bit of a uh, media darling these days, huh? With all yep. the magazines and stuff, what I want you to do yep. is you're gonna you're gonna come up with a fake magazine, and <laughs> and it's gonna be called uh, Hunters: The Married Life, and you're gonna put articles oh. in there. You're gonna you show it to him, whatever. He's gonna start reading it, and it's like you're gonna have fake quotes like, "Wow." My hunting game has really gone through the roof ever since I got married. Tell you what, my after getting married, you just your body releases pheromones that attract deer. You know, you have articles about all that. I actually heard that's true. (laughs) That once you get married, you just uh, if you think bucks were coming to you before that, once you get married, holy smokes. So you're going to do that. And then they're going to reach out to him to have an article in that thing and then they're going to have to turn him down because he's not married and it sounds like he won't turn down any media opportunity that he can get so then you'll have to pop the question just so you can get in Hunter's The Married Life magazine. That is one way you could go. What do you um, think of that idea? Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's I will. A, I'll think about that. Yeah, she'll think about that. That means. Uh, have you guys ever had a <laughs> uh, a relationship uh, counselor ever get into the mix the of this? Word, man. Well, I'm just asking. No. No. And is that a is that a hard no. no from him or a hard no from you? Their their counseling is he goes sits in a deer stand. <laughs> yep. That's yep. Exactly. Okay. So you've never brought up counseling. No. Nope. No. What ha- What do you think would happen if you did? Uh, he'd be willing to try, but he would. I don't think we need counseling. 
Yeah, what the heck, Charlie? Well, I'm not we're t- happy. We're very happy. No one would like to take it a step further. Yeah, no, I'm not, look. Everyone's everyone looks at counseling and you. they're like, oh, it's so bad. But you know, everyone's got these like weird issues in their head that sometimes they just need to talk out. You know, and maybe he's got like a mental block uh, about getting married, and you just gotta get to the bottom of it. I don't think there's any shame in talking to someone about that. You know, He's getting the milk for free, t- Charlie. No. That's what it comes down to. Well, no, Miles. I, <laughs> I, 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 what do, do you think? That's crazy. You don't. It seems like you don't want no. to do a counseling thing. Maybe. 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 Okay. We've given you. Maybe. I, I don't think you. No, first of all, we're not going to quit until we find something she likes, Charlie. All right. All right? It, it, but just so you know, you got to remember that you called into a podcast hosted by uh, a guy who's not yet married and a guy who's divorced. So we're probably the <laughs> worst people that you can ask about this particular situation. But we're going to try and get you something solid before we let you off the horn here. Okay. Do you go hunting with him? Okay. No. No. Oh, that's his thing. That's that's his thing. What, what, oh, what's your thing? I'm um, being staying home with my kids. Yeah, but you have like a hobby or anything? Not really. <laughs> I'm a homebody. I like to stay home. You know, yeah. that could be a good, that could be a good place to start. You know, I mean, maybe uh, you sort of explore. Um, you just start going out without him all the time. And then you'd be like, what's going on? You're like, wow, I'm not married. I don't know. I can go out whenever I want. Now mess with his head. Mm, yeah. <laughs> she is hating every piece of know. advice that we get. <laughs> well, what, what, what kind of get, like, you know. Oh, have you tried proposing to him? Come on. Have you tried it? There. Yep. Maybe I should try that. That's yeah, it. There That's we it. go. And you know what? I'm looking at a <laughs> website right now where you can get um, deer antlers made into wedding rings. Yes, I know. I've I've looked into that too. Oh, have you? Well, why do you don't... actually? But but listen. But you you would like to be proposed to? Is that is that why you wouldn't do the proposing? Are you opposed to proposing? Yeah, I'd like him to do it. You yeah, like him to well, do it? Well, it sounds like that's never going to happen. I don't know, Miles. I it's, it's not. A... I've not. I think. No. This, I think that this goes in the category. Of tough pills to swallow. <laughs> no, you know? My, Miles. This is a horse pill that's hard to go down. Miles, we are here to offer solutions, not to throw up our no, arms. And, and she's calling us for a solution. And Miles. sometimes the solution is just a little bit of truth, Charlie. So she's just got to propose to him, you know? All right. Well, you know what? I think a, a, a good way place to start would be if you're if you, she wants him to propose to her. And I think a good place to start would kind of be like exploring like the things that you like to do and like what are your hobbies? You know, can you find something uh, that you're as passionate about as he is as passionate about deer hunting? And I think you can kind of like, a, you know, not to throw it all back on you, but, you know, you've been trying for 25 years to get this fellow to do one thing. But so maybe a different tactic, if you haven't tried it, is you just try to find yourself. What brings you the most joy? You know, obviously outside of your family and all that. But what, what do you really like doing? Maybe try some new things, you know, try some things you've always like. Oh, maybe I'd like that. But so haven't we done already it. tried Give the hobby goal. angle. She didn't like it. No, but I think she'll like I'm giving it another a poll there. You know, like give us give us one thing that you like outside the family. Could be anything. Oh, boy. Um, I don't know. I just like Hanging out with friends and family. Hanging out with friends and family. Do you like um, hiking at all? You like uh, getting How outdoors? How is that going to help her get married, Charlie? Just relax. I don't understand where you're going with this. Well, Miles, I wouldn't well, expect you to. <laughs> now, Miles and, Miles and, and I, I are about him, to break up. I don't up. need to get married. I just want him to pay just a little more attention to me. No, than I, I got it. I got it. What does he love to do more than anything in the world? Deer hunt. Deer hunt. Deer you, hunt. You gotta make it a hunt for him. You gotta. Oh, yeah. Just just get him in a situation where it feels like, you know, why would I uh, why would I shoot this buck now if I know I can grow it a couple more years and get even a bigger rack on it? You know, why would I shoot it now? And that's his approach. You got to make it feel. Yep. It's it's not going to be true, but you got to make it feel 
Like he's never going to get another shot at this buck and he needs to take it now is what I'm thinking. Wow. Make it a hunt. I didn't think Miles would come up with any good advice in this, but I think he just did. I think he got it. Yep. All right. So what does that look like? What does that look like? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Just tell him that like, oh, I'm taking the kids and leaving, you know, like, <laughs> we'll get the job done. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, I'll see. You're not willing. You're not. <laughs> That's what it's going to take. He's going to be like, okay, fine. I'll get, let's get married. And you're like, let's go. I was never going to leave anyways. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to be the guy I'll that suggests this. Stuff, she, but she's something. trying to get off the phone with us. <laughs> she's like, this is a disaster. <laughs> yeah. She's like, what was I thinking? Calling these guys? Jeez, Louise. Well, how about this? Miles and I, when you guys get married, Miles and I will officiate the wedding. Oh, there we go. All right. All Sounds right. Good. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to make you sad. I feel like your energy was great when we started, and now you're sad. Yeah, we we really screwed no, the pooch I'm happy here. To talk to you guys. Oh, well, it was super nice to talk to and you. It makes you feel better. We truly were doing our best to help you. Though. Yeah, we, <laughs> like, we're just honest, like, we're just absolute idiots. So yeah. you may have called the wrong uh, the <laughs> wrong person to figure this out. But I do like Miles's thing. You know, uh, you know, you find. Find the, the, the thing that, uh, that you know, you like and, and kind of maybe invest in that into your side of it and just find find your thing, you know, and then that'll make you kind of he'll kind of be like, wait, what's going on there? You know, and you'll be like that buck thing. I don't know. I'm Now I'm lost in words, but you kind of get the vibe. Yeah. And before you go, yeah, before you go, what kind of camo does your husband wear? Oh, geez, Miles. Are you sorry to call the CrossFit to their boyfriend? No. Boy, Miles, you know. He's... Because mentally, I thought we made him your husband because we came up with such great ideas. God. Well, you know, Miles, you tried, and this is what happens when you try. Jeez, Louise. Well, anyways. That's okay. You got anything you want to buy, sell, and trade while we got you on the deal? Yeah, all of her husband. <laughs> damn it. All of her boyfriend's <laughs> hunting equipment. No. No. I wouldn't do that, Tom. All right. Well, you seem like such a sweetheart, and you really do deserve uh, that uh, that ring. You really do. Honest to Pete. So we hope Thanks. you get it. We hope you get it. We wish you the best. All right. Someday. Someday. It's going to happen. <laughs> yep. Okay. Does that sound like you really believed it? But it is. I'm putting that out there. <laughs> also, All right. Tell your boyfriend Thank that you I'm a big fan. Big fan. Um, See ya. All right. I will. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Miles. <laughs> what? Jeez, At the end, Louise. I was not purposely calling him a, her husband. I, was that, I messed that up. I mean, I, I I thought I was giving good advice there, I, honestly. She wasn't really giving us much, you know, and you kind of start to wonder. No, I just I just feel you like I start to wonder. And maybe we know how her boyfriend feels a little bit. He needs to be more open to things, too. Well, I, I, I just feel like, you know, if she, if uh, I don't know if she, if she found the thing that that kind of lit her up the way the uh, the hunting lights the husband up you know maybe the husband would be like intrigued by that or, or, or the like boyfriend or get shit. jealous you know or get jealous yeah <laughs> husband. no i'm doing <laughs> 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 oh man i mean let's be honest i don't think they're ever getting married no i think 25 they are. years he's gonna change i um, i think uh i mean she said dude she's calling I believe in that we call that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. She's calling into us mm -hmm. to get advice. I feel like she's at a point. Uh, she's at a point of desperation if she's calling us. I know. You know, but she also wasn't open to any of our advice. Well, we're Other also than, idiots. She she did know? like to propose to him. I think she should do that. That's my final answer. Okay, with a with a uh, antler ring. Yeah. Mm, there we go. All right, take another caller. Guys, by this point in the year, if you're in the Midwest, you're probably sick of shoveling snow. Are you sick of, sick of shoveling snow, Charlie? I'm sick of shoveling snow. Yeah, sick of shoveling snow. You start off the year, you're kind of enjoying it, but by now you absolutely hate it. Yeah, you know, Miles, it is one of them things. You know, you get out there, 
January. Oh, this is fun. This is cute. Before Christmas, you're like, wow, oh my gosh, at, it's look snow. Look at the flakes coming down. It's so beautiful. Yeah. What a, what, win, winter wonderland. Yeah. And then in the in the February, we, it's black snow all over the place. You know, it's just it's crusty. You got the thing right at the driveway. You're over it. You're over it. Yeah. But you know what's something you're not over? Tippy cow. Tippy cow, baby. Yeah. And uh, that's why I like to reward my shoveling eff- efforts with a nice glass of tippy cow. Nothing goes down better than rolling into the house after a big <laughs> shoveling session and uh, just tipping on back a glass of tippy cow. Yeah, tip on back a glass of tippy cow. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying, Miles. It's good stuff. We got the orange cream right now, and uh, you know, I'll tell you what, whoever thought that looked Here's at oranges idea. and looked at cream and said, "Let's combine them," well, I don't know. This is what we need to do. If you're gonna go out and shovel, have a glass, then bring the bottle out there, stick it in the snowbank, keep it chilled while you're shoveling, and afterwards you tip on back another tippy cow. Hell yeah, tippy cow. Dipping on back. Folks, it is that time of the year where things are kind of breaking down and whatnot. It's the dead of winter. And boy, oh boy, if you need some for your car, you need windshield wiper fluid or new windshield wipers after they've been working overtime with all the salt and whatnot. Head on over to the Fleet Farm. They got everything you need to keep your car, your automobile, uh, uh, just just working for you and not like a against finely you. tuned machine finely tuned machine exactly and while you're there why don't you get some fishing stuff some hunting stuff some kitchen stuff they got great crock pots there too i tell salad you that right bowls. now they have salad, salad bowls, bowls the out. whole nine check it out at fleet farm fleet farm we love it heck yeah we do um one thing about fleet farm charlie yes miles What's your favorite time of year for Fleet Farm? Like, and they have, you know, the seasons. You like winter? You like the ice fishing stuff? I like the ice fishing stuff quite a bit, honest. I would say really like leading up to Orange Friday, to be honest with you. <laughs> That's um, your favorite? Yeah, because you got hunting, you got Christmas, you got ice fishing. There's just so much uh, there. And, you know, the, the those activities that you only do one, like once a year, one season a year in winter, it's kind of... You lose the stuff from last year, you know, so there's always yeah. some I need. So, yeah, I kind of enjoy that. Some- I like like right now is a great time to be going through there because you also I think <clears throat> it's like you've gone ice fishing by now and you've broke some stuff. So you can just walk right through there, get some more. You know, it's like uh, you don't go there to buy go there to buy one thing and you leave with 10, you know, so yeah, that's, that's how it why goes. I like this time of year. That's how it goes. Well, thank you for sharing that, Miles. Yeah. It was nice to hear it. Flea Farm, we love it. We do. Who do we got on the line today? Well, hey, boys. It's Ashley from Indiana. I didn't hey. think I'd get through. Hey, Ashley, Ashley from Indiana. You bet you got through. What's what's on your mind, Ashley? Got a couple bones to pick, gentlemen. Oh, no. oh God. Oh, what'd we say? What'd <laughs> we say? when we say it? We're, we're, we're feeling feisty today, so let's just do it. Let's get after it. I can imagine i can imagine well so i thought that it was a cry for help um that you might need to like call a female friend or find someone to help out since your optimal dating advice was to um find a step sibling and then date them (laughs) hey whoa okay that was miles i had been drinking that day i didn't do the math okay i'm sorry i mean you could you can call somebody in, maybe like one of Baron's sisters. They're just a damn delight. So maybe you could like call them in somehow. Oh, yeah. I call my sisters in. Oh, geez. You know, did you listen to the podcast with them or do you know one of them? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I listened to the podcast. Oh, yeah. Was, well, it, was what, it good? It was good. Thanks for listening, Miles. Oh, when do you ever listen to any of my stuff? Uh, when I'm Miles? on it. When I'm on your podcast, I listen usually. Yeah, okay. Except when I'm not listening. Now, is this what you called in to divide me and Charlie, or what? What is going on here? Yes, yep, yes, I, I did. That's exactly the reason I did it. Okay, sorry. Are those your two bones to pick with us? No, I also wanted to pick a bone um, that Indiana has been very underrepresented on this podcast, well, and I'm personally offended by it. I okay. actually just got a missed call from Fort Wayne, Indiana. 
Well, yeah. that's the wrong part of the state. Oh, the okay. good part okay. of the state is right. where I'm calling from. All right. So you're saying that they're – tell me about <laughs> Indiana. Why does Indiana deserve more recognition? Well, one, it's not Ohio. So that's like <laughs> – I would agree. Wow. Yep. Bro, it, 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 Indiana, yep. is this what you need to do to, to, to like climb the Midwest ladder is to Sorry. throw Ohio under the bus immediately? I see how it is, Indiana. I see how it is. I feel like that's hard to do. I mean, I feel like that's like a baby step. Okay. <laughs> that's like – that's the baby step. <laughs> All right. What makes, um, what makes what's Indiana so great? Well, so I live in southern Indiana, so it's beautiful. We have a river, the Ohio. The Ohio um, River. So the it's Ohio not river, so it's not even your hills. so it's not even your guys' river. You're just borrowing someone else's river then. It's no, it's splitsies, okay, between us and Kentucky. So well, just pump it, the brake. But it's not the Indiana River. Yeah, why isn't it the Indiana River? I, I live here. It's a great place to live. So yeah, I think that I think that pretty much sells it. And I I don't see you guys coming to Indiana very much, so it's a little disappointing. Okay, so you're saying that Ohio does or oh, damn it, Indiana <laughs> deserves more recognition <laughs> because one, it's not Ohio, and two, you have a river that's named after Ohio. Those are the two bugaboos, the two things, or what? Yeah, you might have to do a little better than this. Oh, um, well, it's very country. Okay. Yeah. I think there's fishing. There's, I think you're um, starting to find okay. out a little bit why it doesn't have as much recognition, you know? You know what, though? I'm, Maybe. I'm going to say this. I Indiana is an unsung hero of the Midwest. There's a lot of great things going on in Indiana. Which are, Charlie? Well, every time I drive through it. <laughs> so you never stop. <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. You're That's not, not tr- helping at all, Charlie. You, you guys oh. have a lot of beautiful windmills there on uh, on the drive windmill down. Windmill capital of the world. Yeah, you guys got a lot of windmills Northern there. Northern part. Indianapolis uh, is a very fun city. I was out there doing a show, and you guys have the NFL draft there every year, right? No. Combine. You have the combine there yeah. every year. We have the combine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will have to say I have been to South Bend to go to a Notre Dame game once before, and South well, Bend's yes, a fun college that's town. Magical. Yeah, you get yeah, exactly. Agreed. Yeah, you got Notre Dame, so you got Rudy. We could not have Rudy without yeah, Indiana. I'm not a big fan of the movie Rudy, though. <laughs> well, M- Miles, I'm trying to find. It teaches kids the wrong lesson, you know. If you suck, give up. No, Miles, you... let's unpack this. What do you What do you mean it's the wrong lesson? Yeah, let's unpack this, Miles. Well, it kind of it goes <laughs> along the lines of the whole everyone gets a participation trophy, you know. Oh, okay. Let's set this up, Miles. Why do you really hate Rudy? Because I heard that the story did not go that way in real life. How did the story actually go? I think it's pretty much like it like he was just like a random guy on the team that happened to get some scrub time in the game, you know? So it's like it wasn't like the whole team rallied around him like that. I don't even think he really did. He Wasn't it that he like never actually even got carried off the field and stuff? Yeah, it was just like he went in the game. They're like, woo, and then they left. And that was it? Yeah, it was no, like, hoisting him and carrying him off the field and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's not but a documentary, dude. It's a movie, you know? So what do you not like about the movie? I just told you. That it's, just not, it's just not realistic. Yeah, it's a movie. Movies are not yeah. supposed to. <laughs> Isn't it supposed to be based on a true story? Yeah, based. It didn't say a true story. It said based on a true story. I'm just story. saying it teaches you... you, you you shouldn't be just trying to play in the game. You should be trying to win the game is what I mean. Oh, I see. I see. And do wow. you did cut throat. That's a strong note. That's yeah. a strong note on Rudy. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Well, I in- never said it was a bad movie. I just think it sends the wrong message. Okay. Okay. Well, Miles will have to work out that issue on his own. <laughs> what do you think? What do you do for fun in Indiana? Well, I can tell you what I'm doing right now, which is it's the uh, the last day of my kids' two-week winter break, and I'm drinking wine in my closet. So 
That's what Welcome I'm doing to Indiana. Right I mean, you're just uh, really not selling it. You're yeah, just, yeah. Indiana is so great. You are you, drinking you wine go, in your closet. Indiana is so great. You want to go sit in a room with no windows, with no one there, and drink by yourself. <laughs> young children guys i have three young children i'm trying to it's raining outside who's There's watching the kids i don't know the tv <laughs> ipad kids i love it i'm a big ipad kid guy i think i'm gonna just slap one in front of my kids someday right out of the womb yep that's the way to go <laughs> but yeah that's, that's <laughs> as far as outside of that fun we do we're outside all the time Okay. Like, what, what do you do? We've had a lot of each other lately. Okay. Well, what do you guys do when you're uh, outside? We ride, we fish, we hike, we camp. Oh, um, and you're doing all this in Indiana. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Wait, you're, yeah. you're, you're in the yeah. closet. You cut out. What did you say? Uh, I said horseback riding, camping, fishing, hiking. Okay, and she does it all That's in kind Indiana. Of what we do for fun. Yeah, yeah. And are, so, uh, does Indiana have a lot of nice trails to do that? A lot of good outdoors because it's they most. Do. Yeah, it's beautiful. Now, my bias to Indiana, or my you know, like uh, ignorant sort of uh, thoughts, I guess, are that it's a fairly flat state. Is that accurate or not? That is well. So you're talking northern Indiana. That's like the dunes, the windmills, all that stuff that's very super flat mm -hmm. i live in, like in the like we're on the kentucky border and it's very hilly very wooded it's beautiful oh that's awesome see we're we're learning everything uh new and uh so i got a question for you yeah why do people in southern illinois have a heavy southern accent but you don't seem to have that have you always lived there what talk to me about that uh so i've lived here um, I was actually born on the other side of the state, but then I, I've lived here for 20 plus years since college. Um, but people tell me I have a Southern accent if I go anywhere outside of here. So I'm, that's very interesting because we're right on the Kentucky border. And if you literally go five miles South, it's like, Hey, y'all welcome to the South. Like it's, I know wild. that's what I'm saying. And so it makes sense. You grew <laughs> up in the Northern part of Indiana then. Yes. Over by Cincinnati, like across the river. Okay. Well, that makes sense then. But yeah, people tell me I have a Southern accent because I went to school in Pennsylvania. And so they were like, are you from Georgia? I'm like, no. Why don't you go to school in no, Indiana if over? you love Indiana so much? Well, I finished school in Indiana, Miles. <laughs> <laughs> school in Pennsylvania. For, hey, when someone says we're going to give you money to go play a sport, you say, okay, yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> what what sport? kind of sport? I played volleyball in college. Okay, nice. so you are She's not tall. short. I am five eight, so not tall and not short. Five eight. Yeah. You, in sports, they always oversell it, so we'll just say you're six foot. Um. <laughs> Do you mean I'm underselling my height? Yeah. That's what you, all the programs in sports always add at least a oh, couple right, inches. Oh, right, yeah, like I'm six one. It's, yeah, got it's it. yeah, it's like guys when they're talking about themselves. It's always a couple more inches than what they actually got, you know. Now I'm looking at all these things that you can do in Indiana, and I got to tell you, there's a lot I didn't know. Like you guys have underground caves and stuff. Are you Googling this right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, I like you. I'm trying to help you. I want to talk to her about playing college volleyball. We haven't had very many athletes call in. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Continue. I, I'll just keep looking at yes, these caves. Sure. So what was Our your position in volleyball? Caves. I was an outside So you, you could really smack it then is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, that's the goal. Okay. That's the goal. You picked a few bones with us. I got a bone to pick with you. Okay, God, what? Why, after every single point, do volleyball players cheer and act like they just won the championship? And you have organized cheers and everything that happened. What's up with that? Well, I feel like organized cheers is more like yeah, like high school and younger. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot of strategy and effort that goes into every play so it's fun to celebrate it because it's so fast-paced i know but 
a football team doesn't get a 10 yard run and then get back to the huddle and they all high five and cheer and slap each other's asses <laughs> and go like, you know, they don't, they don't do that every time. What's have you ever yeah. gone zip I mean, lining? Like a- Can you imagine after every single uh, <laughs> basket that they scored in basketball, they'd pause the game and then everyone would high five and cheer and get together in a circle. I feel like that's a real missed opportunity to be honest. So I'm, I'm, I feel like football does a lot of like, let's hit our helmets together and like chest bump. That is true. So that is actually, that was a good point. I'll give you that one. So I don't think, and I feel like there's a lot of butt slapping in basketball. So that's true. I don't know if you're, I don't think you got, you got an angle on that one. It's more so the like the rah, rah cheering that kind of rubs me the wrong way. It's like, you, oh. It's kind of the same at, uh, along the lines of the, my Rudy take of, you know, you scored a point <laughs> just like you did last time. Walk back to the huddle and do it again. You know, guys, I'd like to interrupt real quick Hand to tell the ball you to that the ref and then walk back to the huddle and do it again. If you go to Harrison <laughs> County, Indiana, you can spend time zip lining. Miles, pick up the microphone. I'm uh, zip lining, um, doing <laughs> kayaking. And uh, explore these caves. And also there's the historic Corden and Harrison County where you can see all these cool buildings. John Dillinger spent a lot of time there. You can do the bootlegging tour. Indiana is a fantastic place, guys. Okay, you can continue. I think we should like, hire you for tourism. Well, I, I just... That's basically all Barron's does these days. What's that? You just do tourist ads for everything. Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, guy. Hey, I'm up here in Green Bay at the Packer game. <laughs> the 15 best things to do in Indiana with photos. All right. What? Do you have any questions about volleyball for her? We've never had someone call in that's a college volleyball player, and you're sitting there Googling facts about the Indianapolis about, 500, about trails and biking. The Indy 500. There's we could so talk much to anyone to about hiking. Have you, you have a uh, medium to tall gal on the line that's played volleyball? I want you to ask her some questions about it. Okay. All right. <laughs> what's the I'm most ner- I'm nervous okay go ahead okay who like the quarterback is obviously the top dog on the football team yeah okay sure and so who is the quarterback typically is it the one who bumps sets or spikes yeah who's like the one that's like the superstar so first off you say pass that hit not bump that spike so uh... That's one of Wait, my big it, pet so. said spike yeah. sounds Miles, yeah. a little cooler. Miles, don't no. don't you can't argue with her. She's a professional volleyball no, player. Well, she's not. Well, she's a <laughs> she's a college. A she's an amateur volleyball I'm player. I'm aggressively mediocre D2 volleyball player. So let's like Okay. Well, so pump the brakes on Wait, you currently you you currently are in college? No. Mm- no, she's currently yeah, drinking wine in children. her closet, Miles. <laughs> Jeez. I have three children. Aren't you listening? And I'm in college. So, so that really sucks, actually. You missed the whole NIL thing, too. You really couldn't be a professional. Or you get paid for your name, image, like My likeness. brother played collegiate football, and he, like, got in, in the tail end of the NIL stuff and, like, bought, like, a really nice bike with it. And I was like, damn it. So. You know where you can use that, that bike? That's one piece. Indiana has great trails. <laughs> On the trails of Indiana? Yeah. <laughs> and if you get sick of the trails, uh, Fort Wayne has a wonderful children's zoo. <laughs> God. Oh. So who is the quarterback of the Better. volleyball team? Setter. What? The setter. The, the setter. So the setter is like... like Big swing and dick on she's campus. She's got all the hand signals. She's telling you what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. When nah, you're but do the it. public, like the when when the, the media wants to do an interview after the game, are they interviewing the setter or who are they interviewing? Well, I mean, volleyball doesn't get as much media coverage, shockingly, uh, as other sports. But yet. I would say probably, yeah, yeah, true, yet. Um. I would probably say like the middle hitter because they're always like the big, super crazy athletic ones. But the stutter runs the show. 
Okay. They're the unsung heroes. Yeah. So the middle hitter is the answer to your question. Middle hitter. Yeah. You yeah. want you want to be a middle hitter. The answer to your question. Okay. Real good. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that, that this is yeah, this is fascinating. I, I I myself did not play much volleyball, and I wasn't very good at it when I did. So don't your guys' arms hurt when the ball smashes against them really hard? Um, no, Why? not really. How? Well, you guys it does hurt when you get well because you like you get used to it. Okay, like a little like callus. Your, your bones and your muscles get used to. It. You know, I, but it does hurt when you get hit in the face. I've gotten hit in the face real hard, so yeah. that that hurts. That'll happen. You know, I like a, I like a girl with a nice set of calluses on her forearms. That's really really good. <laughs> Do you play in the sand too? No, I'm horrible in the sand. I oh. played like two times and it was awful. No. What? How? I mean, how does that not translate? Are you kidding me? Running in the sand so much harder than running on a court. No, I know it's harder. You would think that it would be like a one for one. Thank you. But like it literally every everything that you have learned on an indoor court does not translate at all to an outdoor court. Give me an example. Okay, I'll give you an example and I don't even play. Sliding. You can slide on your knees on an indoor deal. You're not doing any knee sliding. You're all diving, all dives on the sand. There's also an an itch factor. You're you got that much sand going everywhere. It's going to be pretty itchy, yeah. and it's I'm having to deal with that element. It's something you don't think about. That's mm-hmm. true. Was I right about the yep. knee sliding thing or no? Uh, well, as far as like <laughs> movement on the court, yes, you're right. You're correct. Okay, oh, no, but it's not like what he was jumping, talking like, about. Like on the beach, you got to deal with wind. You mean elements? Yeah, the elements. Sun beating down, sand in your crack, wind, the whole thing. Yep, all of it. That's a no-go for me. Done it a few times. No, thank you. Okay. Have have you ever, I need a fresh, precious indoor court, please. Have you ever been to Horseshoe Hammond? <laughs> no? I take, don't think so. Take that as no. Looks that like is. some gambling goes on there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The casino. No, I've not been there. Oh, okay. Well, that's another well, thing to do in Indiana. In Frank- oh, well, you need to check out French Lick, which is a real place. Larry Bird's hometown. Oh, yeah. French Lick, Indiana. Who named that town? Is that on your... I don't know, but they have some issues. Yeah. They're like... Are they lost? They lost a bet. I don't know. I think that's how you get COVID by French Lick in Indiana. You know, I think that's it. I think you got it. Thanks, Belchie. I have you been to the dunes? <laughs> yes, I've uh, been to the dunes. I mean, they're beautiful. And guys, Indiana like has so dynamite much. Dynamite when the grandma goes to the dunes with her boyfriend. <laughs> Oh, the Children's Museum in Indianapolis has some amazing dinosaur exhibit. Anyway, you are just a wealth of knowledge. Well, I'm just doing a quick Google here. The Wellfield Botanic Gardens. I mean, that's now on my list, too. God, look at these trees. They mm-hmm. got they've got a Japanese garden there, a Zen garden. Holy smokes. Indiana is really cool. Have you been to the city market in Indianapolis? I have. It's real nice there. Yeah. Charlie, Charlie, at some point, she's going to have to come out of the closet. And? <laughs> I didn't even try to do that. Are you judging me? No. <laughs> Miles. Yeah, what's wrong? I was mostly saying she's got kids she needs to take care oh, of. Oh, yeah. Just keep sorry. rambling on. Yeah, sorry. A last one. Exotic. But she did play. Yeah. Exotic Feline Rescue Center. That's the last one I'll say. You can see some lions and not feel bad about it. So, anyways, um, that's that. But, um, yeah, I'm I, I'm really glad you called Thanks, in and picked boys. this bone. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, should we let you go? Is this a Midwest goodbye now? Yes, I yeah, I think so. All right, probably. That's I don't a, hear anyone crying yet, but who knows? Well, who knows? Silence is actually the thing you don't want. If you, you you know, right, yeah, some something's going on. All if you right, don't guys, hear. well, thanks so much. <laughs> for the podcast. See ya. Thank you. I don't know what you said, but I'm sure it was super inappropriate. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't bad at all. All right. Bye bye. So nice of you to call in now. What did you say about inappropriate? 
No, she thought you were saying something inappropriate. It's so funny how, uh, how many of our callers are trying to get off the horn with us. Well, I, f- I feel I like the last two. wonder why. Why? Because all you wanted to do was read Google. That's a really good, that's really good podcasting, Charlie. Well, you know, sorry, we can't all talk about volleyball, uh, Miles. It's just, it's a, it's a topic we've never covered on this podcast. I was diving into it. Miles, when are you going to propose to me? I really spiked that segment. Uh, that was good. I set it up I for you. I would have liked for you to set it up. Yeah, see, I already beat you to that punchline. Jeez Louise. Speaking of that, I got to get another bump here. Yeah. Fill her up. Oh, is that the end of the episode? Okay. Well, that's the end of the episode. Um, guys, thanks for tuning in. Charlie, give them one more fun fact about Indiana. I know you've been waiting. You know, I thought you never asked. So uh, has anyone ever been to the perfect North Slopes? Indiana might not be the first place that comes to mind when you think about ski resorts, but the perfect North Slopes, you'll realize that you don't have to travel to the Alps to experience a winter wonderland. Fresh powder covers a wide variety of slopes. These include marked lanes for beginners and free range hills and trails for experts. Man, Indiana, who would have thought? Not me. Not me either. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Bellied Up Podcast. Your top tourism podcast in all the land. Head to Indiana. You won't be upset you're dead. Drive on through. Love you guys. Love you. Bye. Tip your bartender. Tip your bartender.